Coming up in this video, I reveal the real reason why LaGuardia Airport has a delay problem, and you're coming with me on an actual departing flight that not only leaves the gate once, but a second time too. Keep watching to find out where the problems came from in this fully narrated video where I explain every step of the way with real air traffic control. Let's go. Today my initial departure fix is going to be white, so let's head over to LaGuardia for the flight. Actually, today's departure fix is not going to be white, so white is not all right. You see, today's going to be a pretty bad day at LaGuardia Airport, but I don't know it right now, so let's continue on with the story. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. If you don't know what I do here, I don't just provide a review of a flight or talk about how good caviar is in an Emirates first class seat. This channel showcases the environment and context in which a commercial flight operates to introduce viewers to a different side of flying. There's so much that goes into a flight, and it's not all about how much legroom your Comfort Plus seat has. I've got plenty of videos showing you how a flight operates, but today's will be a little bit different, as I'll focus on LaGuardia's delay problem, but as always, with a real-world, real-time example, as my flight gets ready to head down to Florida. Let's go. Ah, uh, LaGuardia Airport, so glad to be back here. It's a beautiful day here in Delta's Terminal C, and I'm doing my standard routine. Prepping for TSA, then heading over to the Delta Sky Club for the commanding views of the Delta ramp and operation. Today, LaGuardia is using runway 22 for arrivals and runway 13 for departures since the wind is from the south of the field. Okay, I am done with TSA. There's a lot of thunderstorms that's approaching the airport from the west. Let's see what happens, how this affects the airport operation today. I look relaxed eating here, but in my mind I'm thinking about those weather cells and the sheer volume of traffic that needs to get to various departure fixes where the bad weather is. More on that later. Today my flight will be operated by a CRJ900 and my seat is on the left hand side of the airplane. Despite this being a brand new terminal, still the old gates are operational and today my flight will be departing out over the old gates here in the C terminal. Those are some of the old gates there, but my flight will be operating out of a different set of old gates on the western end of the airport. All right, I'm here for the view of the arrivals on runway 22 and departures off of runway 13, but right now there are only arrivals on 22. No one is being allowed to take off right now on runway 13. Here's why. You see, when planes take off from the airport, before they proceed on course during the cruise phase of flight, they need to fly to what are called initial fixes. These are waypoints in the sky that allow aircraft to exit the metropolitan area's airspace and continue along across the country. Generally, the departure fix that your flight needs to go to is in the same direction as your destination. Today, my destination is Jacksonville, Florida, and the most logical and most commonly used fix to get there is white, since it's to the south, and so is Florida. When I worked my way to the airport today, I was pretty certain that white would be my initial fix. It almost always is, but it won't be today. At the moment, while I wait for my flight, no one is taking off because all of the fixes to the west, like Park, are getting slammed with thunderstorms, and all the flights that are waiting to take off are headed to the west, so no one can take off. This, viewers, is one of the main reasons for delays at LaGuardia. Sure, the airport terminals are now world-class, and the airport is finally a pleasant space, but this doesn't fix the delay problem. With small airplanes and high volume, limited departure fixes saturated with poor weather miles away from the airport contribute to LaGuardia's delay problem. Oftentimes, the delays have to do little with the airport itself, and today's one of those days. The demand is there, but the capacity just isn't. Take a look at today's Delta Departures Board. There are quite a few cancellations, yet you get to come with me today on a flight because my flight is not canceled. We'll be flying on flight 4922, operated by Endeavor Air to Jacksonville. It's showing on time for now, so it's time to leave the Sky Club to get closer to the CRJ900, which I'll be spending a lot of time on today. Let's head on over to gate 63 in the old C terminal. The new Terminal C is still featuring part of the old Terminal C, which is accessed by a temporary walkway, bringing passengers to the original westernmost concourse in what was once its own standalone terminal before being consolidated into the new Terminal C. This was built in 1992. It's half gone now. It's half a terminal. I got a little nostalgic coming here, knowing that it'll be very different looking very soon. My gate is off to the left, and I can see my CRJ900 through the somewhat dirty window. Before my flight boards, I took a look out towards the west and saw a queue of departures for takeoff. This is LaGuardia's delay problem. There's no reason for this flight not to leave gate 63 on time. The plane arrived on time from its inbound leg, and the ground crew turned around the aircraft from an arrival into a departure right on time. 
Airlines take on-time performance seriously, and when nothing on the ground to slow things down, the flight boarded on time. Other than the lineup of aircraft out there, which most passengers didn't even notice, there's no indication to passengers of Flight 4922 that we will not get to Jacksonville on time today. The flight appears to be part of an efficient process at this point. Everything is under the control of Delta. However, after passengers were seated in the cabin, the captain made this announcement. Oh, by a taxi or the runway. It looks like it's pretty backed up right now, so we're hoping for maybe a 30-minute uh, taxi. If it's going to be anything longer than that, I'll be sure to let you know. Once we are in the air, however, it's going to be a one-hour and 54-minute flight. Did he see a 30-minute taxi? No way. There are at least 40 aircraft out there waiting to take off. Airlines typically pad their schedules with extra time to make up for delays, such as an extra 30 minutes. So if we spend 30 minutes taxiing and experience no delays en route, we should land in Jacksonville right on time, helping Delta with its on-time performance numbers. In the tiny environment that exists around this small airplane, things are looking good. We're fueled up with enough fuel to bring us to Florida via the standard routing to White. All passengers are seated and the flight deck crew has completed all of the checklists needed to be where we are now. With the ground crew in place and ramp control recognizing that the immediate space behind our tail is clear, we get clearance to push back under tug. We move backwards and the tug turns us so that our nose points out to the airport's taxiways. Things are running like clockwork at this point. Once pushback is complete and the tug is removed and we're ready to start moving under our own power, we'll need to call ground control for taxi instructions to the runway. All flights are departing on runway 13 today, and to get there, a left turn needs to be made out of the ramp. We'll cross runway 22 and then taxi onto the runway for takeoff. But it's not just us. There's a conga line of aircraft out there. There are so many planes that we can't even turn to the left to join the line because it extends past our entry point to the taxiway system. The order of aircraft is based on a first-come, first-served basis, and the only way to get to the end of the line is to turn to the right today. Let's call ground control for taxi instructions, not to the runway, but to the end of the line. No, 49-22-13, follow that American 7-3 there after 11 o'clock, full set of taxiway November. We're here. We need to get here. But ground control told us to follow that American Airlines plane to at least here, taxiway November. That's not the way we need to go, but the taxiway paralleling the runway is completely full, so we need to get to the end of the line. Each airplane that you see out there has been assigned a different departure fix after takeoff, but with thunderstorms all around the New York metropolitan area, many of these fixes are temporarily closed. So in many cases, if the aircraft cannot get a new route in time, they just have to wait until it's safe to leave. Unfortunately, this is happening a lot, so we can't even move. Movement can only occur when each aircraft ahead pulls up, creating space for us. Everyone's in this mess today together, like this United 737 headed to Chicago, and this fellow Endeavor Air CRJ900 headed to Raleigh-Durham. Passengers on this Southwest 737 bound for Nashville just have to sit it out like those on this Delta A319 headed to Tampa. We can only slowly move, and as we continue along behind an American 737 that we saw earlier, we get another instruction from the controller. Endeavor 4922, follow American, hold short, double golf on the way back. Follow American, hold short, double golf on the way back there, 4922. Basically, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. Follow American, because the controller had previously given the American Airlines pilot instructions on what taxiway to take, and rather than repeating them to us, we're just asked to follow him. The controller also said to hold short of double golf on the way back. On the way back is a reference to the fact that following American will bring us to the far eastern end of the airport and then we'll be on the way back after we turn around. Once back around, we'll need to hold short of taxiway GG or double golf. Of course, we'll be in bumper to bumper traffic all the way there, so it'll be stop and go and stop and go. This is a straight line of aircraft and it's necessary due to the airport's real estate. The parallel taxiway can only be used for aircraft that landed on runway 22 that need to get to terminals B and C. There really isn't anywhere on this side of the airport to stage aircraft at all, so they all line up, one behind the other. There's nowhere for us to go now with dozens of aircraft ahead of us, so we just wait until the lineup moves. We're burning fuel, and the flight deck crew is working with dispatch to see how much fuel we'll have left. It's going to be a very long time before we can take off today. Our routing has us flying to the south, which is in the general direction to Florida. Remember that in order to do this, we have to fly over White, which is over New Jersey. 
We've taken enough fuel for this rather straight run, but our CRJ-900's fuel tanks are not filled to capacity. This aircraft has a range of 1,700 miles, but our flight will be less than 900 miles. A lighter aircraft with less fuel is more efficient, so why fuel up all the way? But we're losing fuel now. Orphan aircraft will taxi out with just one engine on, but even that's the case, it's still a loss of fuel that could be used in the air. More departure fixes are closing around the New York area, and this is causing aircraft to have to wait longer and longer until they open up, or else they'll have to find the new fix to go to. It's a nightmare for the controllers who are trying to balance everything. As we inched along, a group of people and vehicles caught my attention next to an American Airlines 737 parked at Terminal B. Upon taking a closer look, I recognized what was going on. This plane had just landed and was carrying a fallen soldier who was returning home. It was a dramatic sight to see and was completely unexpected. As emotions of frustration among our delayed passengers began to grow, a new emotion swept over the left side of our airplane as our slow-moving progress afforded us a clear view of the end of a hero's journey. Meanwhile, in the cockpit, we were asked to switch to a new ground control frequency because there was too much workload for one controller to handle all of these planes. I don't have the audio for this frequency, but I'll explain what we learned from it. The weather systems around New York were dynamic and changing, and unfortunately, a storm started to brew over white, our initial fix. This means that white was shut down. Rather than waiting for the weather to pass over white so it could reopen and we can fly over it, we were given a new departure fix, park, which is to the west. This means that we'd have to fly a new route to Jacksonville. We'd fly out to New Jersey, then towards Pennsylvania, and a little bit further west before heading south to Florida. This would keep us away from the storms. But there's a problem. We don't have enough fuel for this. with our dispatch that it is okay. There's a, a lot of weather that went through and it delayed everybody uh, getting out from all these uh, different departures from different directions. So everything's been shut down for a while. They're just starting to open up. We're trying to figure out to uh, make sure that we're able to do this new route. So with the fuel on board, we'll keep you updated on that. We should hear back shortly about that. Uh, I don't have an update on exactly how long it'll be before we're able to go. Uh, the departure that they're trying to give us is just open back up, but we need to verify with our dispatch that we have the amount of fuel uh, to get there. Um, again, uh, we thank you for your patience, trying to do everything we can to get you up there uh, as quickly as possible. We've been taxiing for 90 minutes already, and we're at a stop again in a position where we can cross runway 22, the landing runway. We're in a spot that allows arrivals on runway 22 to taxi to terminals B and C without us getting in the way. Crossing runway 22 for us would stage our aircraft in a part of the airport with multiple parallel taxiways so that aircraft can be categorized into groups based upon fixes that are open and closed. So in my mind at this point, I'm thinking that we're in a pretty decent position. And once we cross runway 22, we won't sit stuck one behind the other. That won't be happening though. The pilot is talking to the ground controller and dispatch about the fact that we don't have enough fuel for the flight with the new route we'll be taking, and because of this, we won't be able to continue our taxi to runway 13. The pilot informed the ground controller of this, and then he came on the PA system to inform all the passengers of a decision that has been made. Ladies and gentlemen, from flight deck, uh, because of the new reroutes uh, and how long that uh, everything is still being uh, blocked off, we're gonna have to actually go back to the gate to get fuel. We're, uh, we have uh, a new gate all set up for us as far as I know right now and we're able to get going right now so if uh, everyone can please remain and see what their seat boxes is passing, uh, we'll be able to get on our way back to the gate. Okay, 
Charlie 4922, can you still make a left on to Bravo and then Echo Alpha? Okay, Bravo Echo 4922. Time to go back. Our gate will be gate 65 in the C terminal, very close to the gate that we left from originally. The ground controller confirmed with us that we could take Taxiway Echo to get there. Before the construction of the new LaGuardia, Taxiway Echo was a transition taxiway to get from one parallel taxiway to another on this side of the airport. But with the new Terminal B in place, it allows us to taxi behind Terminal B, away from the active taxiway system where all the airplanes are gathered. This of course is an improvement. We're basically going to taxi on the ramp behind a terminal that has gates all around and a satellite accessed by a pedestrian bridge which we'll actually be taxiing under. This is surely an advancement of the new LaGuardia. We'll get to our gate by means of this back path expeditiously. The new Terminal B is complete, gorgeous, and efficient, with paths for planes on all sides, but it doesn't fix the big delay problem. Although billions have been spent for us to be where we are now, we're still delayed, majorly, and we have to go back to the gate for more fuel. The problem is not LaGuardia Airport. The problem is the congested, bad weather-infested gateways out of the New York area that just cannot accommodate us. Well, at least this way, I have something to look forward to. If you watch my channel, you know I consistently fly Delta out of Terminal C at LaGuardia. It's rare I fly out of Terminal B, but because this new path exists, my CRJ900 now gets to taxi under the two pedestrian bridges heading to the gates of Terminal C. This, of course, was exciting. A first for me here at LaGuardia. Well, that was efficient. Too bad the airspace isn't. We avoided the mess on the taxiways out there by means of this very scenic route. Welcome back to Terminal C. So the time limit required by the US government, it was necessary to return to the gate. You have the option to deplane at this point. Should you elect to deplane, please ensure that you take your photo ID, board and pass, and carry on items you may have brought on board. If you deplane and would like to cancel or delay your travel, please check with the gate agent. During the refueling process, I decided to just remain on board at my seat. The ground crew actually fueled us up rather quickly, which was nice since we were running out of time. Fuel us up, and the moment they fueled us up to a higher amount, they changed our route once again to actually be a shorter one. So, um, it's going to be now a one hour and 53 minute flight, and uh, because we're landing on our maximum landing weights in Jacksonville, we're going to actually fly as quickly as we can. Uh, turbulence, uh, we'll make sure that the, we're still good on the turbulence, try to avoid as much as we can. But we're going to try to uh, cut down on that time as well as best we, uh, as possible. Uh, we're going to try to push him back from the gate momentarily. If there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to ask. Once again, uh, we thank you so much for your patience uh, bearing with us. Is it back to white now? Who knows what our initial fix will be this time. The good news is that we're restarting the process again now. Earlier today at 3.20 p.m., we pushed back right on time. It's now 5.45 p.m. and we're doing it all over again. We're refueled with probably too much fuel this time, as the captain indicated. Runway 13 is still the departure runway, and looking back at the taxiway that was fully congested before, I don't see the long line of aircraft. This is promising. 
If we were only metered at the gate until 545, maybe we wouldn't have wasted all of that time and money burning fuel the first time around. In any case, we need to work our way to the end of the ramp facing the active taxiway system, and once the tug is removed, we can contact the ground controller for taxi instructions to runway 13. Ground at number 4922 is number 2 in lane 9 ready taxi. Number 4922, number 2, follow your company, hold short double golf. Follow the company, number 2, uh, double golf, number 4922. We're told to follow another Delta aircraft and hold short of Taxiway Golf Golf. So, like the first time around, we're following another plane to Taxiway Golf Golf, but we can actually head west, the direction we need to go in to get to runway 13 because there's no super long lineup on this side of the airport. I don't know what things will be like once we cross runway 22, but for now, this is looking pretty good, despite it being more than two and a half hours since our first attempt. Oh look, there's a plane taking off on runway 13. Maybe that'll be us soon. We're moving along with some good speed. The goal is to get to the other side of runway 22, and the good news now is that the controller is positioning us to cross runway 22 by having us hold short of runway 22 at Taxiway Foxtrot. We, of course, won't receive clearance to cross the runway until we get closer and there's a gap in arrivals. Air 4922, Bravo Foxtrot, hold short runway 22. Bravo Foxtrot, hold short 22, and Air 4922. So we continue along. Now, at this point, I'm not 100% certain what our departure fix will be, but it seems like we'll be headed to a southern fix. Now, even though we're moving along well, it doesn't mean that all of the weather that was over those fixes earlier has moved away. Listen to the following conversation between the ground controller and other pilots. What you're about to hear is an indication that the problems have not gone away. And as a matter of fact, there are a slew of aircraft on the other side of runway 22 waiting to take off on runway 13 due to the closures. Let's hear this. Ground American 1356, do you have the biggies closed? Yes. How about Lana? Yep, everything west, guys. No, Elliot, Zinn, Park, Lana, Biggie, all closed. We just got a reroute for Lana. It's closed. Yep. That doesn't sound very good. Those fixes were all closed a few hours ago, and now a small line has developed as we wait to cross runway 22 to get to the other side. Let's wait again. Their new uh, route they gave us, we're trying to talk to them and try to cut the line uh, to be able to get out of here get information on that in the next five minutes or so. Hopefully we can cut the line and just leave. Uh, if not, we'll uh, let you know. Cut the line and leave? No, that is not going to happen. As a matter of fact, we're going to stay on this side of runway 22 for another 30 minutes. Now, I missed the transmission from the ground controller, but it turns out that the new route that we were assigned is not a route that we'll be able to take. That route is now closed. So the captain came on with another announcement to the passenger. You can hear the frustration in some of the passengers' voices. Closed off our route uh, before we were able to go. Uh, everyone else is uh, looking like they're going on the same one or uh, similar routes. We are waiting until the workload uh, for those specific uh, points uh, reduce, and then we're going to be able to go on our way. I, they, I have not been given an update on how long it'll be, but we do have the amount of fuel that we need for uh, any reroutes uh, in theory right now. Again, uh, we're trying to get there as quickly as safely as possible. We're trying to race out there to beat the, the close downs, but they keep doing it right before we're able to go. 30 minutes later, the ground controller finally gave us clearance to cross runway 22 to the other side since a gap was found between arriving flights on the runway. Endeavor 4922, cross runway 22 at Foxtrot, left turn double alpha, and uh, Nicole Shore, Charlie Yankee. I right, cross runway 22 at Foxtrot. Double Alpha, hold short. Are we going to Denver 4922? Hold short, Charlie Yankee. Charlie Yankee, Denver 4922. Alas, we can cross the runway, but once we cross, we were asked to turn to the left. Well, the runway is to the right. Do you know what that means? Since we can't leave yet, the controller wants to put us in a staging area to wait it out. And it's an area that's actually far away from the aircraft that are already on the west side of runway 22. It's pretty crazy here today. The ground controller is working very hard managing so many pilots that just want to get out. There's now an issue with a passenger on a southwest flight that she has to deal with. Listen to this. Next round, southwest 2931. Yeah, listen, we have an issue in the back, a passenger that probably has to get off. Uh, is there any way to break yard ahead of us can move and uh, give us some uh, space to go back to the gate? Do you need assistance? Uh, he's uh, special needs, autistic, and has an issue uh, uh, crisis. Okay, do you want me to get somebody at the gate for you guys as well? That would be nice. Uh, it, well, it's not medical, it's more, you know, medical. But anyway, yeah, if we can uh, get back to the gate, we'll advise our ground operation. Sounds good. Take care, 4250, start. What are your engines like a movie place? We'll start one, absolutely. 
As instructed, we're on double alpha, holding short of Charlie Yankee, but we weren't there for very long. Uh, never 49.22, you can actually make the right there, double Bravo, hold short echo, please. Right turn, double Bravo, hold short echo, Endeavor 49.22. Endeavor 49.22, and the other radio, go to clearance 135.2 for a rerun. Roger, Endeavor 49.22, Charlie Yankee, 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 Charlie Wow, how rude is changing again. Let's get our new clearance on another frequency. On app, Goldman Gate departure, then via LaGuardia Jackson, the 48, Cody departure routed. Climb get it set. Expect flight level 3401, 10 minutes after departure, and the rest remain in sync. This reroute now makes our initial departure fix Lana, which is in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. That only takes us slightly inland than the routing to the standard departure fix of White, and we know we've got plenty of fuel. By mistake, the controller hit the transmit button while she was talking to another controller in the tower, so all the pilots got some inside details of her hard work internally. This is called a hot mic. <laughs> It's a Delta RJ. So, is it maybe this guy? No. Hot mic. The retail, uh, Delta RJ passing Kilo. Hey, there's RJ that's, uh, at Kilo. Hot mic. Hot mic. Delta RJ at Bravo, passing Kilo. Great. I'll figure it out. All right, um, I don't, I don't know where it's at. It's that? funny, because he's using this guy's box. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay. Let's just talk. So, uh, definitely put him at 6622 to move. These guys, he's going to move in a second once the passenger sits down. He's going to move Bravo Pop. He's going to move to get out of here. Southwest 34, 344 is up there. Um, everybody else is seated. So, uh, Delta 8618 here. So, it starts there. Never 4922. Never 4922, can you move? Can you hear me? There he goes. All right. <laughs> hey, number 4922, double Bravo, hold short of golf, please. Double Bravo, hold short of golf, number 4922. Looks like we're within five minutes from departure. Five minutes, please approach the cabin for departure. At the end of the controller's hot mic transmissions, she told us to move up on double Bravo and to hold short of golf. So we continued with the hope of getting out quickly to Lana. I don't want to say we are lucky because we're severely delayed, but as we continue along on this taxiway, we see many other airplanes just sitting there because their fixes are closed. I have no idea how long they've been out there, but I can't imagine that many of these planes had to go back to the gate and try it all over again like we did. The controller came back to see if we were ready, and we were told that we were number five for departure now. There are 4922, let me know when you're ready with that reroute over Lana. I expect to be like number uh, five for departure. So the pilot relayed this information to us passengers. We were told that we were going to be next up, but now we just got told that we are number five for departure. The good news is one airplane is taking off right now, so that makes us number four for departure. We'll keep you updated. A few minutes later, we were told this. Endeavor 4922, turn left, Gulf, and uh, at the merge, follow at Delta E-170. Uh, left left so all we have to do now is turn left and taxiway Gulf and follow the Embraer 170. This is the direct path to the runway 13. The Embraer 170 is only visible to passengers on the right side of the plane, and we'll be making a right turn onto the runway. Taxiway Gulf will bring us there.
We then switched our radio frequency to the tower controller, the person who is responsible for traffic on the runway. Even though he's handling fast moving planes, the work of the tower controller today is a lot easier than the ground controller who's dealing with sequencing planes for takeoff. Alas, the controller will have us line up and wait on runway 13 while letting us know that there's landing traffic to runway 22 on a five mile final. 49-22-13-line-up-point-south-5-out. He also wanted to confirm that we have the Goldman 8. The Goldman 8 departure was issued to us in our recent clearance and will have us make a series of right turns after takeoff. While the traffic for runway 22 was four miles out, we finally received clearance for takeoff. It's three hours and 33 minutes past our scheduled departure time. 4922, Let's head to Jacksonville. Alas, we are airborne and now climbing over Flushing Bay. It is now time for the tower controller to hand us off to the local TRACON controller, New York Departure Control. Number 4922, contact me, departure. Departure, number 4922, see ya. We're flying the Goldman 8 RNAV departure procedure, which requires us to make a right-hand turn to 179 degrees to a fix in the sky called Kiwi. Let's check in with New York Departure. New York Departure, Endeavor 4922, 1500, climbing on the Goldman 8. Endeavor 4922, New York departure, right of contact, climb maintain 15,000. Maintain 15,000. Endeavor 4922. We're cleared up to 15,000 feet now. In typical runway 13 departure fashion, we fly directly over Flushing Meadows Corona Park. The Goldman departure will eventually head toward the northwest via several climbing right hand turns. After flying around three miles, we hit Kiwi. We turn further to the right to a heading of 241 degrees to a fix called Bobos. We'll hold that heading for about four miles, then turn to the northwest on a heading of 313 degrees to Golden. This climb generally follows the path of the older, less precise MassPath climb. It may seem a bit out of the way to head northwest before we head south, but this entire climb out is accomplished in a matter of minutes and keeps us climbing within LaGuardia's airspace, having less interference with flights from JFK and Newark. It's really nothing compared to the very long delay we took on the ground today. Our current controller is located in a radar facility in Nassau County on Long Island, and he's keeping an eye on us as he talks to other flights departing LaGuardia and additional aircraft passing through his airspace below 15,000 feet. We're climbing over Queens, and once we make the turn to the northwest, we'll roughly be following the border between Queens and Brooklyn as we head toward Manhattan. Here from the left side of the plane, we can see Kennedy Airport and its massive footprint in Queens. Many of the New York City area airports share departure fixes, so departure fixes that are used by LaGuardia Airport can also be used by other airports in New York City. That's another reason for the delay heading down to where we're headed. You see, many aircraft can be going to the same departure fix from various airports, thus causing multiple flights going to the same point, causing congestion. Speaking of congestion, the controller is going to tell us now not to exceed 250 knots. There may be a lot of airplanes that are headed to Lana today. Air 4922, do not exceed 250 now. Do not exceed 250, Air 4922. We're in the turn to the northwest now, and in the distance is the Atlantic Ocean. We'll remain clear of the ocean while in the New York radar control zone. You can see that, although it's cloudy, it never did rain in New York City for all the hours that we spent at the airport. The delay had to do with bad weather over departure fixes, and these departure fixes are typically around 50 miles away from the city. With weather blocking the start of your route, well, you just can't fly. Safety comes first, and as we know, flying is one of the safest means of transportation. We might have taken a big delay, but it was done with safety in mind. As we fly to the northwest, we get a very good view of Brooklyn. Over 2.5 million people call Brooklyn home, and the gaps in the clouds affords us an opportunity to just see how dense Brooklyn is. On the top right is Upper New York Bay, and beyond that is New Jersey. That's where Lana is. 
One thing that I'm excited about in this departure procedure is that the route points us toward Manhattan to a point directly between Midtown and Downtown. So as a passenger on the left side of the plane, I'm prepared for a view of Lower Manhattan today. This is very exciting. We're now leaving the controller's airspace as we approach New Jersey, so he asks us to turn left at 290 degrees to help us bring us closer to Lana, and he asks us to switch radio frequencies to a second departure controller at the same radar facility handling higher altitude traffic. 74922, turn left heading 290. Left turn 290, air 49922. 74922, contact departure 120.85. 120 at air that's it for air traffic control for the rest of this video. Shortly, the current controller will tell us to proceed directly to Lana, and then we can proceed on course to Jacksonville. This all occurs while over the state of New Jersey. Once we get higher, we'll talk to a controller at the High Altitude Air Route Traffic Control Center. While over New Jersey, this side of the aircraft afforded me a great view of Newark Airport. We're high enough now so that we won't interfere with flights from this airport. What I also saw from up here was something stunning. This video was filmed in July 2023, and at the time, a fire had been burning on a cargo ship in Port Newark, claiming the lives of two firefighters. It took days to put the fire out, and it was still burning when I filmed this. All right, we're going to continue on to Jacksonville via our slightly inland routing via Lana. It's really not that much further out of the way than the normal routing to White. The rest of the flight was uneventful. I hope you gained a comprehensive understanding on what causes the delays at LaGuardia Airport. Everyone knows how beautiful the new terminals are. It's a fact. The buildings are light years away from what they looked like just a few years ago. The facilities are sophisticated and world class, but there's still a problem. Notice how I will never refer to LaGuardia as the new LaGuardia. There is no new LaGuardia. The only changes that have occurred are that terminals B, C, and D were torn down and rebuilt into two new terminals that are glossy. Yes, they are more efficient with more ramp space, and in some cases, gates exist around satellites, but that doesn't fix the problem. The old LaGuardia is still the old LaGuardia. Runway 422 still intersects with runway 1331. The old taxiways are still there. There's very little room on them to sequence aircraft, and one of the key things that hasn't changed is the fact that the airspace cannot meet the demand, especially when bad weather moves in. So if there's a thunderstorm west of LaGuardia and LaGuardia is experiencing sunny skies, well, LaGuardia is experiencing a delay because the path of the aircraft in the sky is blocked. What do you think? Would you have liked to see more of an investment in the airspace rather than in the terminals? Despite liking the brand new architecture at LaGuardia, each time I fly out or into this airport, I automatically think of the challenges that a weather event can cause. Don't get me wrong, I still love LaGuardia and the city it represents, and of course, I'll have many more videos of my flights to LaGuardia on this channel soon. There wasn't much to show in the in route phase of flight, and we're already on approach to the Jacksonville International Airport. We didn't touch down until 9.07 p.m. Remember, I boarded this plane at 2.48 p.m. This plane was scheduled to fly back to LaGuardia for its return leg, but that segment was canceled. I'm going to assume that the crew, which normally flies this plane from LaGuardia to Jacksonville and back, ran out of time. Let's land.
Well, exciting times out of LaGuardia. What an interesting flight. We left the gate, taxied around for a really long time, returned to the gate, then taxied again for quite a long time, and we finally made it to the Jacksonville International Airport. It was an exciting day. Well, I really hope you enjoyed flying with me today. Remember that if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and be assured that I'll be back with many more videos like this. See you soon, everybody. Hey viewers, pardon the interruption. I really hope you've been enjoying my videos. I strive to put out the best content to make my channel the best aviation channel on YouTube. And do you know that there's a way for you to support my channel? It's called Super Thanks and it's available on every video that I produce. To give Super Thanks, click on the three dots under the video on the bottom right. Then click on Thanks. Use the slider to select the amount you'd like to give, then click Buy and Send. Sending levels start at just $2. Everything that you send from Super Thanks goes right back to this channel to make it the best channel out there. Thanks, everybody.